Hi everybody, it's Sally here. Today I'm going to go through knitting a tension piece or tension swatch uh, on the standard gauge machine to be measured with the green ruler. Um, these rulers were originally supplied with the Knitmaster Silver Reed machines um, known as Studio and Singer in other countries. Um, I use Knitmaster and Silver Reed interchangeably because those are the two brand names that I've used all my knitting life and uh, so that's the, the, the terminology that I follow but basically if you are in the States or in Australia and you know these machines by the name of Studio or Singer it is the same type of machine but in actual fact these rulers although supplied with the Knitmaster machines can be used on any brand of machine that knits or where the needles are to the same gauge so if you have a standard gauge machine on a 4.5 millimeter needle uh, width between the needles, you can use the coloured rulers as well. Likewise, the mid gauge machine, if it's 6.5, you can use a yellow ruler. And on a chunky machine, a 9 millimeter machine, you can use the blue one. Um, these are known as rulers, but in actual fact, that is a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't measure anything on, a, on using a system that anybody recognises these days either metric or imperial centimetres or inches, it is more accurate to refer to these as a scale. And all it does is you knit your tension piece to exactly the same dimensions every single time, same number of stitches cast on, same number of rows you knit. doesn't matter what yarn you're using, what tension on your tension dial, what stitch pattern, you always knit the same number of rows, mark the same number of stitches, and then the scale on the ruler measures the uh, number of stitches per 10 centimetres on the one side, marked with S, and the rows on the other side, marked with an R. So um, I will quickly knit one. Um, I can knit one of these in a matter of minutes. So I know there's a lot of people out there who don't bother doing a tension piece and well, if you've got enough experience to be able to get, get away with it because your knowledge of the yarns and what your machine does is that comprehensive or you've got that much experience that you, you're fairly confident what it's going to do, then fine. Um, however, I've been knitting since the 1980s and I always knit a tension piece because it takes a matter of minutes to do it. I think if you're then going to invest a lot of time and money in yarn and knitting on your machine, sewing all up afterwards, to find out at the end of the day that it doesn't fit or it's not the size you expected it to be, then that's when my cup of sympathy tends to get a bit empty because I think, well, if you couldn't be bothered to spend a few minutes doing your tension piece, then <coughs> it don't fit where well, you have only yourselves to blame. Um, <laughs> that piece of sermonising over, let's get on and knit the tension piece. Um, let's put those over there. So I've got this little um, chart thing that I did on my Excel uh, a while ago, uh, just as a reminder for the different si uh, number of stitches and rows to knit for each machine. So um, it is in our files, and the detail is here is cast on green on a standard machine, it's 70 stitches. Uh, on the mid gauge, it's 50, chunky, it's 30. Cast on that number of stitches with waist yarn and knit a few rows. Change to your main yarn, your selected tension and stitch type and knit 30 rows. Push up on both sides of centre the 21st or 16th or the 11th needle from either side of the centre knot and place a marker on them. Um, very helpfully on the silver reed machines, um, the 21st stitch actually marked on mine here. Yeah, I don't know if you can I tick this up and show it to you. It's that little arrowy thing there so that you know that when you come to mark your stitches it's that one you need to pull forward. Just notice my machine looks a bit dusty. Um, anyway, uh, go back, mark your stitches, knit the same number of rows again, so knit a further 30 rows, change back to your waist yarn, knit a few rows and remove the swatch from the machine. Um, I have got one here. What I then do in the section of waist yarn at the top of the knitting, I then make a series of transfers indicating the tension dial setting. Um, so this one, to put it against my hand so you can see, is one, two, three, four, five, six. 
that tells me that my tension dial setting was six. If I had it on six and a dot or six and two dots, I'd leave a space and then leave another hole or two holes indicating the, the dot setting. But that's a whole number of six. And then when I knitted this piece, I had it on tension seven. And so there's seven eyelet holes across here. It then acts as a permanent reminder as to what your tension dial setting was when you knitted your piece. Um, so you can then chuck that on one side and come back to it six months or six years later and remember what your tension dial setting was. Um, the important thing also to remember is that um, you need to treat your swatch as you're going to treat your finished garment. So if it's the type of yarn that needs washing and pressing, you have to wash and press it before you measure. Um, because obviously if it changes during that process, you need to know and understand what the tension is going to be after you've done that so that your finished item will again come out the size you're expecting it to be. So you know, if you're knitting in a Shetland or something like... Um, like this greenia, which is this noppy synthetic yarn that you have to kill it dead with a steam iron afterwards. Um, you know, your garment made in that, once you've killed it, it will be about 50% bigger than it was beforehand. So again, always treat your swatch as you will the finished garment before you measure it. Uh, right, so let's crack on and do one. Um, I've got my waist yarn here in the white. So the back, you can't quite see it. Lift this up again. Some white yarn at the back of the machine. That one is my waist, and that's going to be my main yarn here. With this blue stuff. The blue one is um, Yeoman. Uh, what's it called? Panama, uh, which is a, a cotton and acrylic mix, and it's described as a fine four ply. So I'm going to knit my stocking stitch swatch at tension six. Let's move that back a teeny bit so. See all the centre knot is there, isn't it? Just going to turn it around a wee bit. Right, so I'm going to pull out 70 stitches. That's 35 either side of knot to working position. Uh, thread up with main yarn. Now I always make a loop in the end of my yarns, just like making a little knot, so I can hook it to the clamp underneath the uh, the machine, and then I've got my hands free, both hands free for fiddling around and that yarn is there so thread it into my carriage and set my tension dial to tension six now I've pulled all the needles out to D position so I have to make sure that my carriage is set to knit back so my rustle levers are at two that's fine knit one row across and then I'm going to do I can find one find my ravel cord cast on where I've just got open loops in those needles. Hook the ravel cord in between them and the sinker post, not in the needle hooks themselves, it's in between the hooks and the sinker post, and knit back. Super quick cast on if you just want an open edge. For tension pieces, the open edge is perfectly okay. I've got some that I knitted months and years ago, and as long as you've got several rows of waist yarn, it won't unravel. So pull out the ravel cord after you've knitted about five rows. And knit a couple more. And there's now enough knitting to hang some weights on. So I'll put one in the middle. And one at each side. And I'll just knit sure it's hooked in. Knit about another four rows. So break off my waist yarn and now I'm ready to knit my swatch itself. So it's threadled up overhead. I've got my tension set on six on the tension dial. Just thread the yarn up and I reset my row counter to naught. And as per the sheet I'm going to knit 30 rows.
Okay, so I'm halfway through. Now I now need to have a couple of lengths of marker yarn. So I'll just pull them off this. Oh, what well, I've got there. Make sure I've got two. And this is where I'm going to pull forward the 21st needle, either side of naught, and hook that little marker in there and just pull it back. Uh, some methods of knitting the tension piece, they tell you to leave that needle out of work so you get a ladder. That's just as effective. Uh, again, it just really comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. Put in a couple more weights on the edges. And now I'm going to knit the remaining 30 rows. That's my 60 rows done, as you can see on the row counter, 60 rows done. So I now break off the main yarn, um, being cotton it's not going to break so I'll use my little cutter that I've got on the side of my carriage and change back to waste yarn. So I knit about eight rows or so. That's my eight. And now I'm just going to get my transfer tool, single transfer tool, and make six eyelet holes to remind me of my tension dial setting. Two, three, four, five. Uh, six needles transferred. So now I've got all those back into into work. It's pulling these all forward to D, but putting them B doesn't really matter as long as they knit back and then knit another sorry, eight or ten rows or so. And that's it. That's the swatch knitted. So remove my weights. yarn and remove from the feeder, run the carriage across and it will fall off. Hook from the clamp. Uh, let's just get a pillowcase and put it over here. And that is it, that's my swatch knitted. Pair of scissors and just cut off all these tails so that they're not interfering. And as the knitting stretches it sideways, if it's stocking stitch, I'll give it a little pull downwards. And if I was going to have to wash and press this before I measured it, that's what I would do before I measure the swatch. Now, um, to once you get to the point where you're ready to measure, and you want a nice flat surface. nice flat surface and with your green ruler with the S side facing you you will measure between the two marker stitches so you're measuring your 40 stitches and then this will give you the number of stitches per 10 centimeters on your gauge so the number it's reading here is biasing slightly is 32 between there and there, and 31 and a half. So that's the if I said that was 32, 
32 stitches per 10 centimetres. If you prefer to work in inches, divide that result by 4. 32 divided by 4 is 8, so it's 8 stitches to the inch. And then you turn it around, turn over to the other side, and between the start and finish of your yarn, there's two sections of waist, you measure the rows. Taking care not to distort it as you go. So that to me is 39 rows. So I've got 32 stitches and 39 rows to 10 centimetres. Or 8 stitches and oh, whatever 39 is divided by 4. Maybe 7.75, I think. 39 divided by 4. Uh, 9.75. 9.75 to the inch on the rows. And that's it. That's my tension done. Now, to give you some idea of the differences between tuck and stocking stitch, this is the exact same yarn knitted to the exact same tension using tuck stitch. I've just broken my finger now. Deal with that. So you can see, exact same yarn, but I've just used a tuck stitch pattern. Tuck makes probably the biggest distortion to the knitting out of any of the stitch patterns. So let's just measure that for stitches. Stitches is 30. Not quite so drastic on the stitches, but on the rows, I have got that coming out at about 60. The eight rows to 10 centimeters instead of 39 so as you can see that's a big big difference and just look at the difference in the size of the swatches huge difference between that and that so it's very if you're going to use a different stitch pattern very important to check your swatch and if you're going to mix and match the two different types of stitches within one garment again very very important to make sure that you check your tension and i was quite pleased with the way that came out it felt very nice I tried the similar stitch on some fettuccina, which is like a ribbon yarn, which I could feel was a bit thicker. So I upped my tension to tension seven, but that feels like a carpet. So I know that I'm either going to have to try a different tuck pattern or um, increase the tension even more. So that's it. That's how you knit and measure a tension piece. It doesn't really take long. I mean, I've obviously spent a lot of this talking to you about different things, but um, yeah. To actually knit the swatch from start to finish, you can do it in a couple of minutes. All right, here is one I did on my mid gauge machine, uh, just for purposes of illustrating that it's exactly the same uh, process. And um, got a yellow ruler. Well, on the mid gauge machine, I cast on 50 stitches, knitted 20 rows, pushed up the 16th row uh, stitch either side of center and marked it and then knitted another 20 rows carried on but the actual process of measuring it afterwards is the same so here it is it's my mid gauge swatch my ruler so uh, very helpfully the newer rulers actually tell you how many things you're measuring so it says measure 30 stitches and measure 40 rows but um, the older ones like this old green one doesn't have that on there so my stitches this little piece is coming out at 24 21 2 3 1 2 3 4 and the rows is make sure I'm not distorting it 31 2 3 33 rows so exactly the same process and if I had done one on a chunky machine it, it would again follow the same rules knit the, the uh, piece according to the stitches and rows and then use your blue, blue ruler to measure it it really is easy these things I have found over the years to be extremely accurate um, I've never been let down by the thing itself getting the measurement wrong the only thing that's ever let me down over the years is what I then subsequently do with the mass but that's uh, me being an idiot and not anything to do with the rulers not working 
So um, I hope that's cleared up a few uh, questions you might have had over how to use the rulers and uh, you'll be happily making impressively accurate tension swatches from now on.